Tree mining started in 1997. I came home from a hard day's work at the knitwear factory, I had a pile of ironing to do, I'd rather have been out rock climbing. So I thought, put these two things together into a new sport, we could call it extreme ironing. This year, some of the world's best extreme athletes came together in Munich for an historic sporting event. The first ever world championship in extreme ironing. We have people from all over the world coming to iron head to head, find out who's the best of the best. But there's a problem. The world of white goods adventure sports is at war with itself. For this year also saw the first world championship in extreme vacuum cleaning. There is only so far you can go with an ironing board and an iron. Yeah! Vacuum cleaning appealed most in terms of riding, riding the range, riding those appliances, getting them into a position where you could really push yourself and push the appliance to the limit. Yeah, you, you no more see me outdoors with a vacuum cleaner as, a, as with a dish mop or uh, with some fairy liquid. It's, that's just given away a brand name, so you're probably not allowed to do that. There are a small group of men and women who will go to the ends of the earth in search of new challenges, who will risk all in their quest for adventure and danger. But for many extreme sportsmen and women, nature itself does not present enough of a challenge. They are seeking something else, something more, and for an increasing number of them, that something is ironing. Extreme ironing has gained such a large following that it was decided this year to stage the first world championship attracting athletes and media coverage from all over the world. The sport is now a global phenomenon, and it all started in Leicester. Condé Nesta Traveller and BBC News Online's covered us, and um, the local papers have covered us, and um, we even got on the Time website at one point. Well, basically, it started about five years ago now. Um, I came home from work, it was a sunny day, and I much more preferred the idea of going out rock climbing, but I had a pile of ironing to do. So I took my iron outside into the back garden and got an extension cord and tied it up to the house and ironed a few items of clothing. And then my flatmate came back and asked what I was doing. And uh, I told him I was extreme ironing and he said, um, well, that would be a great new sport. And that was really the birth of it, really. <laughs> I've been extreme ironing for two or three years now. Um, ever since I met Steam, and uh, he explained he explained the kind of the art and the, the beauty of it, as well as the extreme sports side, and uh, the the sort of pleasure you get from starting out, you know, just just up a tree or you know on a crag or somewhere with a pile of you know, up creased shirts, and uh, to actually be able to come down after a day's adventure, a day's activity and excitement with I don't know, press laundry. There's nothing else quite like it, really. Like Steam and Starch, most members of the British squad come from Leicester and can claim to be among the most experienced extreme ironists in the world. to say that I was there from the beginning really when it sort of uh, steam started it all off um, and similar to tyranny I have a sort of memory of sort of being in North Wales and iron hurling so and I also gave Phil his first iron as well so steam had been throwing an iron around yes it was iron hurling and 
in in Wales. Um, there's quite a few of us around actually, and um, Starch joined in as well, and they're just throwing their irons about. Have, we were just going for a walk really, because um, it was too wet to climb or anything, and he was just throwing an iron about, and I didn't really, I honestly just didn't think to even ask what is this, all this all about, and I just thought, oh, he's just doing it for fun, which in a way he was. It has snowballed in quite a short period of time, you know, considering that we did start in 97, but in the last couple of years, it's really made a big impact. Then this whole thing just blew completely out of proportion, and the next thing we know, we're off to Munich next week. Thirteen nations, 100 top athletes, big corporate sponsors, and a mass of crumpled laundry. It's time to decide who's top of the pile in extreme ironing. Members of the British squad are training for the freestyle event. They've been developing some new moves, but will it be enough to see off the foreign competition? There is a fear among the squad that, like cricket and football, extreme ironing will prove to be yet another British sport at which we are humiliatingly beaten by foreigners. Over at Steam's house, he and his girlfriend Short Fuse have obtained a video featuring the impressive German ironing squad in action. Germany, I would say, are going to be favourites because they're the hosts and uh, they'll have the crowd behind them. So obviously, they also know the terrain, don't they? Yeah, they know the terrain and they know the background, and they've probably been practicing on the course since they've set the course up. So one might say it's an unfair advantage that they've got. Um, but other teams that we're looking out for, um, the uh, the Austrians look very good. I've seen some pictures of them mining up some ridiculously high mountains. Um, so they've obviously got nerves of steel. And um, the Swedish could be there and. They've got blonde hair, so they'll at least look good when they're ironing. Um, and the Australians so, might be quite good on the water section. Yeah, they could be. And uh, the Australians are very fit and strong, and they put lots of practice in as well. So um, I wouldn't say that we're the least favourites, but uh, that we're certainly up against some stiff competition. Steam and Basket, another member of the British squad, have come to a disused water tower to practice one of their manoeuvres. The weather is so bad, they've been advised not to iron today. Nevertheless, they decide to continue. Weather well, conditions are pretty wet, so uh, I don't know how it's going to pan out, really. So, uh, very windy as well, so uh, we're just going to have to get on with it and see, I think. Big up, sir. Free hanging all the way to the ground. Extreme. nervous it's very windy and uh, I've now got to go and rescue basket and give him some laundry which isn't something I'd anticipated so uh, I'll just go off the edge and we'll see how it goes ironing can be dangerous even in the domestic environment but in circumstances like this it is often necessary to take special precautions um, task is here today is to look after the uh, county people come down abseiling to make sure they don't hurt themselves yeah we're just here, just in case. Yeah. Uh, I've done this duty before, and as of yet, I'm glad to say no one's hurt himself. Okay. And but you also to look after the uh, extreme ironers. Yes, yeah, so in case they burn himself on the iron, or <laughs> hopefully nothing like that will happen. As the championship approaches. It has been revealed by the Germans that the teams will be judged not only on extremity, but also the quality of their ironing. So it's vital that the British squad is prepared with the right technical equipment. The iron is the important piece of equipment for the event. Obviously, otherwise, you know, we wouldn't be extreme ironing without it. I really like this one because it's quite weighty um, and it helps you being to be able to really press out your creases. The British squad has secured a sponsorship deal and a lot of free irons from Rowenta. But will the equipment be up to the task? So the family DM900 professional laser is a high range uh, product. And so we are sure that we can use this as well in hard conditions. And why has this one been selected specifically to, to 
for Team GB for the competition. Yeah, you see, this is a professional iron. For professional use? No, for domestic use, but it's a professional performance. This is a so-called UL drop test. So we test the iron when they fall down, how stable they are, and we can uh, make sure that they are stable when they fall down and they can completely be used again. But all is not well in the world of domestic adventure sports. Six months ago, a group of extreme ironists from Manchester, called Urban Housework, became fed up with ironing, and so, in this coffee shop, a new white goods sport was invented. We've been coming to Starbucks now for several years, really, since it's actually opened, uh, and this is where the original concept was bought. There is only so far you can go with an ironing board and an iron. There's only so many different things you can do. And so we developed different concepts. And, and, and the one with um, vacuum cleaning appealed most because it was the richest tapestry to play with. It took it away from just doing the, the housework outside uh, yeah. and took it to more of a sporting level, really. It yeah. required skill. Learn a lot about the company, though. Learn less about receiving it, though. War has broken out between the two groups. Urban Housework has decided to boycott Munich and organize its own world championship in extreme vacuum cleaning. They've decided to hold the event in Manchester, but how big do they expect it to be? Definitely not as big as the Commonwealth Games. Uh, if we had some as big as the Commonwealth Games, we'd be very, very happy. We're looking for a small, select group of people that are up for it. What we really do need is commitment. It's a young sport, it's a new sport, it's an extreme sport. Mm. And, you know, there's not going to be that many people with the dedication and commitment to put the time and effort into it. So, no, I'm not expecting it to be as big, but I am expecting the quality to be there. I think the main problem with extreme vacuumings is that it's trying to alter the outdoors. I think um, you take extreme ironing out of there, you don't actually change anything outdoors at all, whereas with extreme vacuuming you're trying to trying to make it clean and trying to make it in something it isn't and something it shouldn't be. And really I've I just don't spiritually find that as as appealing or as or as sort of fundamentally right as, as ironing. Certainly they haven't got the sort of sponsorship and backing that uh, that we've been fortunate to have. What the ironists don't realise is that the vacuumists are also seeking a lucrative sponsorship deal from a white goods manufacturer. Suddenly the race is on. Which sport will be regarded by the white goods industry as the premier extreme household activity? Vacuuming or ironing? Whoever wins, cleans up. The Extreme Ironing World Championship in Munich is to be divided into five sections. Water, forest, rocky, urban and freestyle. Two members of the British squad, Starch and Ironman, have journeyed to the French Alps to practice their rocky manoeuvres. This is treacherous terrain. 58 people were killed on these mountain ranges last year alone. Yet our ironists are attempting to negotiate these slopes with an added burden. 25 pounds of bulky ironing equipment. Will it be dangerous? It will be when we get the, doing it with a board on your back, yeah. It just yeah. Your, your center of balance is completely different. So when you go for a hold, it actually feels that it feels further back, so you do get pulled back off the wall. Yeah. Try and strap it in the center of your back, best place for it by far, because it, it doesn't swing around as much then, it doesn't get caught. You don't want it below your waist. Because uh, you, you can get into trouble with that, definitely. And the fact is, we haven't compromised on the ironing gear. You know, we've actually gone for, for quality, yeah, yeah. a quality iron and a quality board. But I mean, that, that makes a difference. I mean, we haven't got a lot of climbing gear, which means it might be a little bit 
strung out, but yeah, yeah. at least when we get to the top, we know the ironing will be will be spot on. Yeah. Starch and Iron Man have come to a section of the Alps known as the Aiguille Rouge, the Red Needles, so called because of the massive towers of rock which shoot up high into the sky. How do you feel? Kind of apprehensive, actually. Um, we don't actually know for sure that there's a, there's a way up here that's doable. And uh, there are a few loose looking bits at the top. Urban housework may have scored their first victory against the ionists. Electrolux has expressed some interest in their alternative vacuum cleaning championship, and the boys are on their way to a meeting at the company's headquarters in Luton in the hope of clinching a deal. The meeting today is, is mainly, I think, to get, to get hold of the vacuum cleaners that, that we really need for the championships. Also some, uh, some t-shirts would be quite, be quite nice, but we don't know whether they're willing to do that as well. Are you able to disclose how much money is involved in this uh, sponsorship deal? No, we never disclose the um, value of, of any of our sponsorship arrangements or, or our marketing budgets. Unfortunately, the boys are stuck on the M1 and are running three hours late. The first World Vacuum Cleaning Championship hangs in the balance. We've been waiting for about three hours to get through two junctions. Uh, it's just been a total nightmare. Hi Mark, it's Tom Wells calling again. Hi Neb, how are you getting on? So whereabouts are you now? Somewhere near, not far side of Milton Keynes. Oh. You're not going to make it. Luckily for Urban Housework, he's so keen to sponsor the event that the global communications director is prepared to make the deal over the phone and offers to supply Urban Housework with free vacuum cleaners. We thought this one might be good for the um, Urban Housework uh, Championship, but although it's nice and light, it's not as robust as something like this, which is actually built for hospitals, hotels and that sort of thing. So this is quite a lot heavier. So this is one which I think will probably be more suitable for the, for the boys in the downhill racing. Would Electrolux consider developing maybe um, an extreme housework uh, vacuum cleaner? I think we'd have to look at that, yeah. Can't say definitely yes, but I think it would make sense. The difficulty, I think, would be combining something which has got the right sort of downhill performance. Um, with good vacuum cleaning quality as well. For example, I gather from the boys that one of the things which is most important for the downhill event is large wheels and good ground clearance. But um, good, good ground clearance is the last thing you want with vacuum cleaning, when you want to be as close to the ground as possible to get the best suction power. But that doesn't mean that it can't be done. At last, the ionists reach the final part of their climb, the notorious Aguilette d'Argentière, two great spikes of stone which tower above the French town of Chamonix, 5,900 feet above sea level. For Starch and Iron Man, this is a tough challenge. They don't know the rock face, so they're unsure how to make the climb. Starch makes it across with the iron, but Iron Man is left struggling with the cumbersome ironing board. He reaches one of the most tricky parts of the climb, getting from one needle to another. The heavy board is weighing him down and putting him off balance. He struggles to maintain his hold on the rock. Eventually, he makes the crossing and, triumphant, Starch and Iron Man unfold their board and conclude their climb with a spectacular display of high altitude ironing. Urban Housework has invited a local newspaper to cover the forthcoming vacuum cleaning championship. The publicity stills feature their new Electrolux vacuums. 
but many extreme vacuumists are rejecting the new machines in favor of their older models. This is the twin turbo. Now, she may not look much, but believe me, she really does pack a punch. As you can see with the twin turbo, it gives it that extra goo in its power. But also, you see, it's got solid, a solid wheelbase, which is very important in these kind of events. It's a really, really good sod hoover. One of the old ones, and I think they're the best. It's a, a classic, the old bag on the back, um, and a nice light that flashes and lights up when we're hoovering away with it. Uh, four speeds and uh, brush setting as well. Word is spreading about the new craze of white goods adventure sports, and Zippo Circus has been encouraged to introduce an extreme household theme into the show. But not all the artists are convinced. It's very heavy, and I can, I don't know. It's not funny, I don't understand. They give, I don't know, I and Sinat. How are we going to perform with them? Is, for example, if I jump, some funny trick, and with I and, it's not possible, I don't know. You can hurt yourself with yeah. the oil in that. Does perform. it make your act more dangerous? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, 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 yes much yes, dangerous. Yes, yes. And not for us, but uh, for uh, audience as well. It's just being able to hold the iron in my hands and still keep a safe grip on the strut, as you can see. So, just try putting my body weight on. With only days to go before the championship, the British have been told that they must use irons provided by the Germans, which have been preheated. This may cause problems, since they will be required to iron a variety of fabrics. What we do have concerns about is, um, you know, that the iron is going to get too hot, and we're going to then, you know, if we're given something like nylon, and the iron's not been able to be cooled down, then, you know, we're going to have the material that's going to pucker up. And this is quite a difficult material to iron. Um, and if, for example, my iron is too hot, you can see, puckers up straight away, and we're going to end up with, you know, points that will be taken off for that. The British are getting nervous. When the pressure's on, will they be able to handle their delicates using unfamiliar equipment? The pride of a nation is at stake. The search for ever more extreme environments has brought Starch and Iron Man to the uppermost slopes of the Alps. Just below about 14,000 feet, so it's, uh, the air's a bit thin, a bit breathless. Uh, some big crevasses, so um, we're hopefully going to find something that we can um, do some quite extreme, extreme ironing. When it's just you and your iron and your board, a bit of steam around and uh, some laundry, it's, it's really fulfilling. Ionists from Leicester are packing for their journey to Munich, but another problem has arisen. They are restricted by what they are allowed to carry with them on the plane, and so they are being forced to leave behind many of their ironing props. We're quite limited on that because we were going to take... Um, so we had bikes and we were hoping for um, 
shopping trolleys as well. But this is probably our largest item, Trump Pack, which is going to be involved in the um, freestyle event. How's that happened? Over at Steam's, meanwhile, things aren't going to plan. With only an hour to go before the plane flies, Steam and Short Fuse discover they have a flat tyre. They may be experts with an iron, but they can't figure out the car jack. So, with the clock ticking, the television crew lend a hand. <laughs> There's some stuff there. There you go, look, you need this, you need the big thing. But even the crew can't figure it out, so they offer Steam and Short Fuse a lift in their van. Someone's going to have to hold that, I think. Oh. There we go. Well, hi. Right, Steam and short fuse are in time for their flight. And in the canteen, they have a moment to reflect. This is the first time they'll have met with the international ironing community, and Steam fears that the British may be lacking in technical training. We've been practicing actually our freestyle with the hot irons, and we only used them with hot irons for the first time last Wednesday. And it is a little bit different. It's, it's all very well sort of throwing yourself around and uh, doing somersaults and stuff like that, but as soon as you've got an iron that's sort of got 1800 watts of sort of power behind it and it's very hot, then it's, uh, it takes it into another dimension, really, so... Um... I reckon the Germans have been practising for some time with the hot irons, um, being organised that they are, but it's the Ukrainians and Chileans, they're the unknown entities, I think, so who knows? Who knows what they've been practising, so... Well, welcome, everybody, to this first international urban housework competition here in sunny Dryalston. It's a nice cold day, which is uh, exactly what we need. Paul, if you could just play some music for us, please. <laughs> All right, thank you very much indeed. And I'm sure what you've seen has uh, more than exceeded your expectations of everything about this event. The day of the Extreme Vacuuming World Championship has arrived and the competitors are heading for the first event, downhill vacuum cleaning. This is where um, the downhill hoover and actually all began. Uh, this very road here is about six months ago when uh, me, myself, Duffers and uh, another guy called Matt came down and we did some, some first, very first downhill hoovering. It looks very dangerous. It is a bit dangerous, yeah, but this is the risk you take, you see, when, when you're doing such a, a dangerous sport. I mean, all outdoor sports are dangerous. got something like seven seconds to judge on style and technique and speed you know so yes it's a bit difficult perhaps we need more judges in future is, it, is this the first time you've, um, you've come across extreme housework yeah, it's the first time anyone's ever approached us and we've come across extreme housework and such things like this, but a danger in it and all that, yeah. But is this something maybe, this is, is this a kind of sport that would interest you? Oh, ah, yeah, I'd, I'd get into it with the uh, element of danger and all that in with it, yeah, I would be. Back at home, though, um, who's responsible for the, for the housework? Oh, that's the wife, that's the missing that, yeah. So maybe is this something... Oh, no, you'll have to leave her out of it. I mean, if there was that much danger today, I'd have to be made from the housework. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm always nervous before any performance. The day you're not nervous is the day you don't care about what you're doing. But tonight I'm even more nervous because I'm the one that's trying to convince everybody that these irons are going to make a big difference in the show.
Lovitz Foxall. Oh, it went down great. Yeah, it was excellent. At one point, though, I thought I was losing my grip, you know, because it was starting to slip a bit, but no, it was great. Munich and the final preparations are taking place for the Extreme Ironing World Championship. It's pouring with rain, but that doesn't dampen the enthusiasm of the British squad, whose coach is just arriving. They have decided to wear red to conjure up memories of England's World Cup victory over Germany in 1966. The squad will be divided into several teams, each consisting of three ironists. The first British team is led by steam and includes starch and basket. It's a strong combination, but how will they do against the foreign competition? We've been talking to a few other teams, talking to the German team, the Austrian team as well. And apparently the Austrian team is, is also one we've got to look out for. What's your strongest? Strongest? Uh, I'm, I come from Tyrol, from Austrian. And our special, uh, we are good in uh, ironing on the rock and ironing on the, the trees. Everywhere up. And I think we are also good uh, ironing freestyle. How much would you like to win? We trained for now for three months. Yeah, nearly four months. Nearly four months. Yeah. We trained for that championship, and we and want you, to win. But looking at the British team, yeah. do you think they pose a serious threat? No way. No, no. I don't no think way. so. Can I don't think with so. Everyone. Cheer! Yeah. 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 Marks, set, go. The Extreme Vacuum Cleaning Championship continues with the indoor events. The teams are attempting to clear a path through a series of four types of domestic debris. Salt, sugar, rice and paper clips, each representing an increasingly stiff vacuuming challenge. And the judging isn't getting any easier either. Which team was this one? It's uh, the Henry Hoover Grace. and the Yes, and you were the fastest, Grace. And is the cleanest in every section. So we get ten points for each one, Grace. <laughs> yes, they were all under the misapprehension that they had to clear the whole lot. Which it didn't state that, it just said clear a path through the debris. Was that a very disappointing performance? Yeah, it was very disappointing actually. Uh, first of all, we actually had it on the wrong setting. Uh, we actually had it on long pile. And we should have really had it on the short pile to get a bit of speed up on it and a bit more suction, put a bit closer to the ground, really. Uh, as soon as we realised halfway through, we had to put it straight on, and it, it did clean up very quickly. Slight mechanical failure at the end. Um, as you probably heard by the noises, something got jammed inside, but I think it might need a bit of work, or I might just have to use one of our um, backup hoovers, I think. What's happening in the next event? The next event, there is a carton of peas being spilt inside the Bouncy Castle. A member of the team must pick up all the peas. The team who does, does it in the quickest time is a winner. Must pick up all the peas, not miss any.
However, in a dramatic development, Team Electrolux has made a formal complaint to the judges, accusing a number of their competitors of shaking the bouncy castle from the outside. Monkey dust, extreme angels and urban gorillas wow. all took part in the rocking. Each of those three teams were disqualified in that round. The disqualification is a major upset, and many of the vacuumists are still reeling from the news when the final result of the championship is announced. In second place, with 106 points, Team B, House Maidens. And the winning team with a 16-point margin, 122 points, Team E, Team Electrolux. Well, we couldn't have really done it without Electrolux, and we just want to put thanks out to them, really. Now, we, we saw some trouble with the um, Electrolux model that, that, that you've been Wait, supplied with, and uh, <coughs> will you be using the same cleaner next year? Yes. I mean, it, it's, it's, for us, it's early days using the, uh, the Z45 series. Uh, I think it's a great machine. It has performed extremely well. Some superficial damage. Nothing there that we wouldn't have expected uh, from any machine. Despite being marred by controversy, the vacuumists consider their first championship a big success. How will the ironing championship compare? All eyes now turn to Munich. morning of the big day. The world's media jostle for interviews with the competitors as the countdown begins for the first Extreme Ironing World Championship. Three, two, one, zero, go! Austrians are first up at the water event. They head for the trickiest part of the rain-swollen river. This may lose them points for the quality of their ironing, but they are hoping to make up ground on extreme style. Basket passes the Austrian captain on the way in. He puts in a solid bit of ironing, but his performance is otherwise unremarkable. And it's the Austrian captain who's attracting all the attention. British team captain Steam tries to redeem the situation with a large rubber inner tube, and in a passionate effort to rouse the troops, displays his patriotic fervor. God save our gracious queen, God save our noble queen, God save our queen. Starch and the others rally round and put in sterling performances. But the determination of the British is no match for the physical and technical superiority of the Germans. surfing ironist ends up in the soup, but his performance goes down well with the German judges. Steam has reached the forest section. He looks disconcerted to find a German in a tree ironing upside down. Who's thought about this? 
His own performance is comparatively lacklustre and, what's worse, as he's at work, he spots an Austrian ironing above him even higher in the tree. Basket arrives hot on his heels, but his performance is almost identical to Steam's. Basket is followed by the Austrian team captain, who is strapping crampons to his legs. To the amazement of Basket and Starch, the Austrian clambers to the top of a huge pine tree without a safety rope. An Austrian is attempting to dangle from a tree upside down and iron on the ground. To mock the British, he's doing it wearing a Union Jack hat. What he doesn't know is that ironing from a tree upside down is one of Starch's most practiced manoeuvres, and the Austrian is easily outclassed. The British judges are clearly impressed by the ease with which Starch irons from this position and by the neatness of his tea towel. The Austrians are putting in an impressive performance at the rocky section, using ironing manoeuvres which the British have never seen before. Team captain Steam is beginning to feel the championship slipping away, and the strain is beginning to show. Are you nervous at the moment, or could you give us a, a short live interview in five minutes after this? Oh, right at the end. I don't know, you have to organise it with Gemma. She's um, doing my interviews. Now, uh, we are live on air from between three and four o'clock. I then... don't know, you have to check with Gemma, she's keeping my timetable. You are right in the course at the moment, yeah? I'm right in the course. Okay, then, but after, uh, after you finished here? I don't know, Gemma's got some interviews lined up for me. If you check with her, she'll be able to tell you if I'm free. I don't know if I'm free, because I might be doing another one. Yeah, but we are live on, and they could... If you check with her, then she can say yes I or no. I can't check her, because I don't know where she is, so... Uh, she'll be up the top. I don't mind, but as long as I'm free, but if she's already booked me into something already, could have done a radio no, interview. Just for a minute, you know, after you finish here. Okay, as long as she says it's okay, it's not up to me. The Brits seem unable to match the flair of the Austrians at the Rocky event. But there's one thing they do have over the rest of the field. Every other ironist appears to be taking a leisurely stroll around the course, losing valuable points on time. But the Brits are running like blazes. the urban event, a tame performance from tyranny fails to impress the crowd. Though the cameras are strangely drawn by the sight of Iron Matron sprawled across the back seat of a car. Yet again, the Austrians are stealing the show. The Austrians have been performing excellently, really. Um, they've really put some thought into all of their events. And no, I think they're definitely strong contenders at the minute. It seems the Austrians are always prepared to go one step further. The question is, how well are their extreme ironing antics going down with the high-minded German judges? That was quite exciting and quite risky. Is that going to mark very well? Um, no, <laughs> because it was not that risky. There was already um, one friend of him and he already destroyed another window so it was not so very um, exotic um, and it was very destructive starch has reached the freestyle section and is using a teammate as a prop meanwhile basket has already finished the course way ahead of the field um, well, I've come back and I've uh, been told that I've got the top time so far and I had to wait around at the first station. There's a long queue there, so I was about a 10 minute delay there as well, so that should come down a bit more as well. But uh, I really haven't got a clue how any others are doing. I overtook one per at least one person on the course, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm uh, going to come in with the result. Travel Iron arrives just in time to see Starch descend, so pleased with his own performance that he forgets to cross the finishing line, losing valuable seconds. The British are putting in a solid finish. What they lack in extremity, they seem to be making up for in the quality of their ironing, a factor largely ignored by other teams. The Austrians are finishing with a flourish. Their performance goes down well with the crowd. 
but how will the judges view their slow time and creased fabrics? The judges have struggled for four hours to decide who should be the first world champions of extreme ironing. The bronze medalists are to be announced first. Uh, I was very nervous and uh, excited in equal measure. You could cut the tension in the room with a knife. Großbritannien 3! One of the British teams has taken bronze. We're in the medals, but it's a mixed blessing. When I realised that we got bronze place, I was delighted. Um, but at the same time, I realised that that was probably our medal. The crowd is convinced that it's now a race between the Austrians and Germans for first and second place. So, who's won silver? An Lokalmatadore, Platz 2 geht das Team Deutschland. Second place is silver and silver medal for Germany won. The time has come. Who have the judges decided are the greatest extreme ironists in the world? The first world championship team competition is the team from Great Britain, Great Britannia Heinz. I was completely shell-shocked. Um, I could see Starch and Basket coming up to the stage and they were clearly delighted and jumping up and down. But I just couldn't believe it, I almost couldn't accept it. Family life with the Osbournes tomorrow at 10 past 11. Next tonight on four, no chance of good behaviour when offenders find themselves back at school. The Urban Housework Championships this year were a brilliant success. Next year's going to be even better. Bigger sponsorship, bigger suction, bigger hills. To be quite honest with you, extreme mining is running out of steam and we're really here to pick up the pieces. <laughs>